All right, I'll just start. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Maybe we'll get it working. Uh, my name is Moritz Fischer. I work for National Instruments, which is a US-based company. In the Atlas Research team, we make software-defined radios. Uh, outside of building software-defined radios, which you can learn about in the SDR track that my colleagues are organizing, uh, I am also one of the kernel maintainers for the FPGA Manager Framework. Um, the FPGA Manager Framework is fairly recent. Uh, we started out around Linux 4.4 when we first got merged all the support for uh, the basic framework and Zinc and uh, SOC FPGA. Uh, is this going to work? Okay, I'll, I'll just keep talking. For Zinc and SOC FPGA, um, since then, we've gotten a bunch of other drivers that got merged. Um, it's pretty interesting because they were from different types of uh, systems. One of them is uh, actually still platform board file based. There is a bunch of uh, device tree based ones. And now new is the PCI Express ones, which turned out to be a bit problematic because when we first started out with this framework, it was all pretty much based on device tree. Uh, foolishly enough, we assumed we'd just get device tree overlays merged really fast because now there is someone that actually needs them. Turns out a lot of things in the kernel break if you just apply device tree overlays. So we're still discussing back and forth with device tree maintainers on how to get that merged. So right now it still kind of works only with out of tree solutions on top of FPGA manager framework. Uh, now back to the problem that the FPGA manager framework is trying to solve. Uh, it's basically you have a processor that has some sort of FPGA connected to it. So that could be something integrated like the Zinc, where you have an ARM processor and an FPGA in one die or from Altera until the same thing called uh, the SOC FPGA. Uh, there's also other platforms that are connected via PCI Express on a separate card, or they're as Thomas's problem, <laughs> where you have a PCI bus that goes off chip, then connects to an FPGA, and um, that's another challenge we ran into. So our um, current problem we have is dealing with uh, different systems. Our current solution we have is basically um, only more or less working for device tree overlays and device tree based systems. Uh, currently on the list, we have a patch set from Intel uh, where they try to support their uh, data center, soft, uh, their data center accelerators. Um, that works roughly like that. You have, have a PCI Express card that comes up with a base bit stream that contains a PCI Express endpoint, which then shows up as a PCI Express device that then binds a driver. And this driver uh, then um, probes the other things that are in there by means of what they call DFL, which is some sort of self-describing uh, compressed version of a device tree more or less. So it describes what kind of hardware is in the FPGA image and then we can go and probe that, instantiate platform devices using that and then create a user land interface that is currently very specific to Intel but we're trying to figure out if we can generalize that to make uh, cases work because um, there's other cases where you have discoverable buses uh, where all we need to do basically is trigger reconfiguration and we can make the other things happen magically again. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm a bit lost without my slides because uh, I'm trying to remember all the things I wanted to talk about. Um, I also wanted to have time in the end to have discussions and people yell at me for things that don't work. Uh, I had three slides in the end that I sort of called the good, the bad, and the ugly. So um, the good is definitely that we get more and more uh, actually systems supported. The bad is that we can't really run without any out-of-tree patches, <laughs> which is kind of sad. And the ugly is um, there's some use cases we currently flat out don't support, like yours, uh, which is uh, just reprogramming an FPGA from user land and then using other kernel interfaces like PCI Express to scan what's in there. Uh, steps that we've taken in that direction is uh, we have split out uh, the device tree specific code um, and split the FPGA region, which I'll soon have slides for as it looks. <laughs> um, the, we've split that out, so 
Um, we hopefully can build on top of that to enable these kind of use cases. So the idea before was that on, on Boot we would scan the device. Yay, all right. That was... All right. Okay, I'll, I'll go back to those two pretty, there's two things we're, we're addressing anyway. So there's full rate configurations, you re reprogram the full FPGA. There's two cases, discoverable, non-discoverable. Um, the discoverable one is like where you can probe and see what's actually in the image. And there's a non-discoverable one where you need some sort of additional out-of-band description to make sure what hap uh, to, to tell software what happens. Then there's also partial reconfiguration where you first program the entire FPGA with some sort of base image that creates these sort of slots. And in there, you have regions that you can then reprogram. So those regions, when you reprogram them, need bridges that you cut because otherwise the hardware in there might behave, behave somewhat random during reconfiguration and break other things in your design around. So that's stuff that we also take care of. Um, the history I've sort of talked through a bit out of order because I didn't remember all the facts because I assumed this slide to be here. So I'll just skip over that uh, for the sake of brevity. Um, the players in FPGA manager framework basically are three entities. Um, we have managers, which basically deals with like how does you, how do you actually program the FPGA that might be over spy, uh, that might be bit banging spy, that might be uh, talking to a separate block in your SOC that then does a configuration that might be a CPLD that's hanging off, that might be something connected to USB. So there's a wide variety, but we don't really want to talk directly to that. Um, I, I briefly talked about the bridges, which basically separate regions in the FPGA or the entire, re the entire FPGA during uh, reconfiguration. And then there's regions, which is basically um, the thing you want to be talking to in terms of writing software for the framework. And they model uh, the part of an FPGA that is reprogrammable, okay? So if you have a full FPGA that you completely reconfigured out, would be one region. Um, if you do partial reconfiguration, you might have several regions in there. And um, each region has a reference to an FPGA manager, so it knows how to load firmware or how to load a bitstream to that part of the FPGA or the full FPGA. And it also has uh, a list of bridges that it needs to um, disable or enable. Um, how does it all fit together? Uh, basically, you have a device has a couple of regions. Uh, each region has bridges and it has a FPGA manager that lets you uh, reprogram it. So in the beginning, when we started out with the framework, we thought we'd talk directly to FPGA manager. Turns out talking to regions as an interface is a better idea. Um, with device tree based regions, um, basically you can define regions like that. You say this is a FPGA region, you pass it the reference to a manager, you have a firmware name which is your bitstream and then um, all the green stuff would get applied to the tree via an overlay. Unfortunately we don't have an interface for that but it does work if you can somehow apply the overlay. Um, regions revamped, that was the refactoring that I talked about before. Basically, we're trying to separate, separate out the device tree code that all lived in FPGA regions.c, split out the OF part for uh, device tree, so now we ha needed to make uh, it possible to register FPGA regions, so this would allow you to bring your own device, to bring your own region from a device and also to unregister if, it, your, if your device goes away. Um, then as interface you get FPGA region program FPGA where you pass in the region you want to program and uh, some image info. As part of that image info uh, you bring your buffer that comes from wherever. So uh, that is again sort of bring your own buffer. Uh, we hope to enable things like that, uh, like Thomas's case where you have an FPGA that's hanging off the SOC with something like that but we still need to look at how exactly make that work from user land. And, um, the DFL part I had talked about before without slide also. <laughs> um, PCI Express, there's, uh, read, then, then, uh, there's the base image that programs, uh, is programmed in there. It has hardware description that describes what else is in there. So basically based on that DFL that we parse, we then instantiate bridges in the manager and all the regions where you can then um, create additional devices that implement the region interface. So then you can go and program those. Um, the current plan for the Intel case was to have an IOCTAL interface to user land because they have a bunch of other things they anyway need to do for 
for uh, performance counters and other things that you might want to read from user land. So we hope to uh, probably use that um, for other cases too. Um, as I said before, uh, we have other cases where we're not entirely sure how to go about because um, you might have a non-discoverable FPGA hanging off a bus that doesn't like USB and uh, at that point you might not have device tree to describe what's in there so um, long time ago I had a patch that uh, proof of concept basically attached the header to the bit file that you can then parse to then figure out what's in the FPGA and then instantiate uh, the thing, the, the, the devices that are in there but uh, that didn't go super far so um, we're still looking into that. Uh, Again, the good, as I said, uh, representing things with the device tree worked really well. Using overlays works really well, assuming you can do that from user land, which we can't. Um, the hardware support is growing, so we get more and more drivers. Uh, the bad is that it, it doesn't really work currently for non-DT platforms, but we're working on that with um, the Intel, Intel uh, patch set as a reference, because that's the only platform we have available. And... Um, the ugly, well, uh, we currently don't have a user land interface. We definitely need to come up with one that works for everyone, uh, which is why we don't have one yet. Uh, some use cases currently don't work, but we're working on that. Uh, but not all is doom and gloom. Here's a picture of my cat watching TV. And <laughs> let's go to questions. Uh, questions? Yes. Yeah, so even on the platforms without DT, once you manage to load your overlay, you could use a DT overlay. Yes. You, I mean, we had long discussions at Plumbers about this, and then people had different opinions on how well DT overlays work for PCIe and non-DT based platforms. I think the conclusion was it should work, but no one has actually tried it. But then Lars, Peter Clausen, said he did that for a PCI Express card they had. So there's definitely people that have done it. Uh, there's just nothing mainline or patches public. Yes? Well, I can definitely say that we also use that DT based approach for DC Express based devices. So okay. That can work kind of, I just need to ask a colleague how they did it. And another thing that I am in contact with uh, Amazon are worldwide people due to their F1 and power instances. No. Nope. I mean, they're using Xilinx FPGAs, right? They are. Uh, yeah, so I, I had talked to the people at Xilinx and asked them to send me hardware, which then resulted in not getting anything back. So, um, <laughs> I mean, it's like when I developed the code for the Zinc for partial reconfiguration, I don't have a license for it, so how do I test it? Well, I don't. I read the manual, I wrote the code, and it turns out someone else used it, and it does work, but, I mean, if I don't have hardware, uh, <laughs> well... <laughs> There's nothing I can do. Same question on the Altera side. Are you working with them, or are they working with you? Are they interested? In well, I, Alan Tal, who's the other maintainer, works at Altera, and I think he has access to most of the things they do. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that would be a similar question about ceilings. <laughs> uh, whether they work with us? Yes. Um, for the Zinc, uh, yes, for Zinc MP, I think uh, they have in their own tree an FPGA manager driver. However, that depends on some uh, firmware code that they're, I think, in the process of upstreaming. So ultimately, Zinc MP should come into place. However, the whole thing with Zinc MP is a bit complex because they have all these different processors and it's not clear who does what for every setup. So. It's a bit more difficult than for the simple case where you have one processor that's in charge of doing something. But yes? So uh, for Zinc MP, uh, the partial reconfiguration thing, I think they try to require the license or something. Yes. So how does this work? Do you communicate with the license manager before you do the reconfiguration? Oh, no, it, it's for, for actually creating the bit streams where you need the license. Ah, okay. so, I mean, in our use case, I can, I can talk about us, why we don't do that as a company. I mean, if we sell something to people and everything, our whole FPGA code, everything is open source and we want people to recreate the images we, we make for our hardware. 
but the fact that there's no free license available keeps us from using the feature, which otherwise is really cool because you can do things like the Intel DFL things where you don't take down your PCIe Express link during reconf reconfiguration. Yes? Yeah, but that, that's expensive, right? Block RAM. 4K, yeah, our images are very, very big, so it's just a matter of, yeah, it, it makes a lot, it things a lot easier. So you actually query the FPGA over the PCI for a piece of advisory, which is not ideal, but yeah, you have to something. Yeah, that, that would be, uh, so yeah, it didn't re respond to, uh, I didn't reply any, uh, repeat any of the questions, but the question was like whether you can bake in the image info into the, the, like the, the, the hardware description into the image and yeah that, that gets you back to the discoverable case because suddenly you can look at what's in there uh, that's what Intel does with the DFL uh, my proposal was to use flattened device tree to sort of standardize so we create a little header that goes on every bit stream um, I mean, it seemed smarter to me than baking it inside I mean because because storage on your on your SD card or wherever is way cheaper than sacrificing block RAM, which in smaller FPGAs you run out fast. But the problem is that we don't know. The image gets loaded at some, at some point, and we lose, kind of lose the image. So we don't know who loads it, and at a later point, the driver has to determine what, what it should do. Well, the, the workaround we have for that is we have sort of like a revision register that we then read and figure out, okay, what's loaded. Mm. I think there was a patch. Uh, I think we might have. Let me check on my list. Yes. So the question was if we support CVP for Altera devices. If it's on that list, I think it is supported. But I saw definitely patches for that. I don't know at what stage we are with merging them, but we're looking at it definitely. Other questions? No? All right. Thanks for your attention.